this is Rob Bannister, and I'm here with another update on a gizmo called Flickr. You can see any updates or info on my website at bannisterpost.com. You can download the tool there, or you can download it on Wikipedia. Flickr is a gizmo I created based off of the curve tool that you can find inside of Nuke. I made that tool to salvage some time lapses I had that were flickering. So you can see on this one I had some auto white balance issues and flickering. Flickr was not the only thing I used to get these to work because some of these were actually pretty complex, the amount of flicker that was in it and what was happening. So it's a combination of other tools that are also available for you inside of Nuke. Other Flickr tools that I found that I liked uh, is the Furnace Deflicker. This one's a bit different than the Flickr tool would be because uh, just Flickr or Curve tool is just going to analyze the region of interest that you draw. But something like a Furnace Deflicker will actually use block sizes and break the image up and um, give you a better result that way. Flickr Free has some presets that I like here for time lapse, slow motion. It'll even take out some rolling horizontal bands, some banding that you might get in footage. So here I have a checkerboard, and I'm going to go through um, all the knobs and stuff that are available here and all the options. I'm going to start with a grade here, and all I've done is add an expression here. That's just adding a random value per frame, and then I've offset the curve. So I'm going to put down a new flicker node. So we can choose which channels we want to analyze. This is the region of interest that we have. You can choose to use this box. And then if you further need to isolate the mask input on this node, so it'll, by plugging that in, it'll turn on the mask. And now we're left with just this and the region of interest box. If that's unplugged, uh, this node will be disabled. So once we've decided what region that we want to analyze, you can click Go. It'll pop up this, so you can put in your frame range. So for now, I'm doing 1 to 100. Once that is finished, so this is what our first frame looks like. Um, I can uh, you choose to either deflicker or add flicker. So we're going to deflicker. I'm going to choose this frame as my reference frame. So this will mean that there is no change. And then as we move further down, now there is no variation to this animation anymore. So on the top, um, you have the deflicker. On the bottom, you have the original. So also what we can do is we can change our reference frame. So if I want to choose this one, now the deflicker will be based on that frame. So back to frame one, there's a frame hold here. I'm just going to copy this deflicker node and turn it to add flicker. So now if we look at this, change our reference frame to one. I'm going to wipe between both of them. So up here we have flicker on one side and a grade on the other. And you'll see that they're perfectly matching. So I can further demonstrate that by showing you the modifiers here. So if I increase the tint, you can see that the red curves increase. The green. So we're adding the, uh, that value to these. Uh, a multiply will stretch the curves out, and that is locked down by whatever frame. If we just grab one here. So if I set my current frame to that, that frame will be a value of one because there's no change on that frame, and every other value will be modified from there. And if you add, you're just going to list the whole thing up by the value that you're adding. Um, this is all on the grade, so you can clamp your black and white points. So again, if we look at this, back to the original, set our reference frame to be the same. We've got a perfect match. And then I've added a tint. Over here in the average intensity data dropdown, um, but first of all, you've got to create Flickr grade. So if you click on that, 
it will create you your own grade node that is expression linked. So any changes that you make to this, if you were to modify the tint or anything like that, it will be replicated in here. So that's useful if you want to use this as a controller, and then you have a whole bunch of stuff that you're going to add multiple flicker grades to, you can do that. You can also just use this as well if you need to. Your flicker data, if you want to drag it into your own grade node, is here. The original curve tool data inside is here. Lastly, we've got normalized data. So the curves that we generated here, if I click normalize and I put the same frame range in, 1 to 100, what that is going to do is it's going to take that curve and take the highest number and squeeze that into a value of 1 and then the lowest down to 0. And I find that this is useful if you want to have two different setups, a lighting change that goes from dark to light, you can uh, put that into a dissolve and have that choose whichever one's best for each situation. Um, this can be helpful for doing keys or any setup at all that you have um, different lighting changes on, the, on your green screen so you have a different keying setup that you're using for a dark and then a light and this will be able to switch in between those based on the exposure changes. So this is some footage that I shot um, with a lens by Richard Gale from Richard Gale Optics. Um, it's his dog shid optics flare factory lens. And basically it's uh it just flares a lot. As soon as light enters the lens, it just bounces around inside there and creates this flaring. And this was shot with an oval aperture uh, emulating anamorphic with some tinting, so that's where all that red's coming from. So needless to say, it's a little bit difficult to um, grade this when it changes so much. So it goes from very bright with this pinkish um, purple flare to it, and as soon as that light goes away, um, it looks a little bit more natural, still a little lifted. So if we work here on this shot um, between 400 and 600, I'll use a flicker and analyze the section. So now that's done, we have this curve. So this is our curve. So I come down to the normalized data, say normalize and put the frame range in that we just put in, so 400 to 600. There, this will give you a a curve that runs from 1 and the lowest point will be 0. So coming back to the viewer, if we find the brightest, and go to the curve and find that, I guess it's the right at the beginning. So I'm going to grade that. And then we'll grab the white point. So that's pretty aggressive, but um, let's just say that is where we wanted to go. Bring back some of that contrast. We can see some of this rainbowing artifacts. And as soon as we start to move somewhere darker, so if I come down to the bottom of the curve, this just isn't going to work. So I'm going to take another grade node. And on this one, I kind of do the same thing. I know that her dress was white. And grab a black point here somewhere. There, so two drastically different grades. So I use a dissolve node. 
So darker, so zero is going to be in the darker, one to the brightest. This is our normalized value curve. I'm going to drag that into which. And now that node will appropriately select um, which grade it's going to use. So this was the reason for uh, making that normalized value section inside of Flickr. Um, but I foresee this being very useful if you have lighting changes on your green screen or other setups. So here are some examples. This is one of the more difficult uh, flickers that I've had to fix. Uh, this one, just the way that it was flickering through the clouds, the sun as it's rising, um, and then the exposure changes of the camera as it was taking each photo. I couldn't just add one deflicker to this. I actually had to do the clouds and then along the horizon and down below here all separately. Um, but in the end, I was able to salvage this. Here's a small piece of it. And the other one that made me continue uh, with Flickr was this one here. So this was a Fuji camera. I ended up sitting on my bag and I just left it recording um, so I get a little bit of both. I had an anamorphic lens on it. The lens flare is beautiful. Um, but what happened is um, Fuji cameras back then had this auto exposure issue that I brought to their attention and it just not only is it changing exposure but it's changing white balance and there was no way in the camera to lock that down. So you get to frames like this, where it's gone completely blue. And I mean, it's just color changes. There has to be a way to fix this. Uh, was not easy. This is probably the hardest one that I had to salvage. And um, here's the result. So here I have another example. This time, at sunset. So from the beginning you can see this dipping in exposure. So there's a slight flicker in the sky. So what I did, I sampled the sky, I did 100 frames here, and now that flickering or that exposure is gone. So to take this further, further on in the, uh, in the sequence, there's a bunch of cars that are zipping by here. right in this area up the road. So if you wanted to remove this, there's a bit of a different um, exposure change in the sky and here. So I ended up sampling this area and then using a key mix with a roto shape so that now I end up with something that works for both. I found a frame without any of the cars, so frame 400. And then I took this deflicker, well, I took a flicker tool and then sampled before the frame hold. So 400 to 500. Switch it to add flicker. Now on the frame hold. because there is some slight changes in color and brightness that are happening. And then key mix that section in to do a clean plate. And now we have at least this section, a nice clean time lapse with all these nice lovely clouds moving, no flickering in the sky, and none of these single frames of cars moving. So there you have it. The deflicker tool <laughs> called Flickr, uh, which helps you take out Flickr, um, helps you add lighting changes into your clean plates, uh, interactive lighting if you're needing to put fire or anything like that into a scene. Um, you can download that again on my site at bannisterpost.com. Please subscribe to the channel. There's a lot more to come. 
Um, I'll have tools and tutorial updates coming soon. Within the next week, I believe I'll have another one. Thanks for watching. Bye for now.